Hi, welcome back to my channel. My topic today is keratoconus. Start with a solid foundation. Definition. Keratoconus is chronic bilateral asymmetrical progressive disorder which causes corneal stiffening, thinning and biomechanical instability. Age of diagnosis is typically between 20 and 30 years. Tomographic definition. It's abnormal elevation maps, especially posterior, abnormal curvature map with or without abnormal pachymetry map. The typical presentation of keratoconus is astigmatism with progression trend towards irregularity, high order aberration and visual impairment with reduced quality of life. What we have to know that studies show that the common knowledge that keratoconus progression stops around the third decade is not precise, so documented progression is required. And recent studies examined that the tears of keratoconus showed increased interleukin-6, MMP and TNF-alpha, which are known inflammatory mediators. So from now on, we cannot consider keratoconus as a non-inflammatory disease. It is actually inflammatory progressive disorder. Etiology. There is a general etiology which includes atopic a disease or atopy, aerobic, contact lens wear, oxidative stress, genetic component, ethnicity, and UV light exposure. And there are also some syndromic uh, keratoconus etiology, which includes Down syndrome, Marfan syndrome, ehlers danlos syndromes, and etc. Histopathology. Structural and cellular changes in keratoconus are being observed in each layer of the cornea. In the epithelium, it might be a, a cell thickening, loss of epithelial density, which is responsible for the epithelial thinning. The, the basement membrane appears irregular and contains localized breaks. In Bowman's layer, ruptures uh, can be in various degrees. Discontinuities in Bowman layer uh, can lead to distorted stroma, and defects in the Bowman's layer facilitate and increase in nerve fibers that can be also thickened. The stroma can be reduced in the volume and low keratocyte density might also be observed. The cement membrane will be characterized with ruptures and folds and endothelium may become detached from the layers and the pleomorphic cells might be also elongated and the rupture of the cement membrane will be responsible for the endothelial cells degradation as well. Classification there is a morphologic classification and tomographic classification. Morphologic classification includes nipple cones, which have a small size 5 mm or less and steep curvature. The apical center is either central or paracentral with the common location paracentrally. There might be also oval cones and globe cones. Oval cones are larger than nipple cones and they are usually 5 to 6 mm and globe cones, those are larger, more than 6 mm and may affect 75% of the cornea. Tomographic classification is based on elevation map, thickness map and curvature map. The best map to evaluate the cone is a tangential map, which provides the best highlights of corneal irregularities. The more detailed explanation about tomography classification of keratoconus, please check in my Pentagon from the beginning series part 3, where I talk about ectatic corneal diseases, introduction and ECD's progression criteria. Amsler Krumai classification of keratoconus is probably the most clinically used uh, classification. It includes uh, four grades. The first one is characterized with eccentric uh, corneal stiffening, myopia with or without astigmatism less than 5 diopters, and K readings less or equal 48 diopters. Grade 2 is again absence of scarring, myopia with or without astigmatism between 5 and 8 diopters, K readings are between 48 and 53 diopters, and minimum corneal thickness is 400 micron. Grade 3, again, has, is not characterized with uh, scars, myopia with or without astigmatism between 8 and 10 diopters, uh, K readings between 53 and 55 diopters, and mini minimum corneal thickness between 300 and 400 microns. And grade 4 is characterized with corneal scarring, uh, not reliable refraction, K readings are more than 55 diopters, and minimum corneal thickness is 200 micron or maybe even less. 
ABCD Curtacon's grading system is the newly described uh, classification which uses the anterior and posterior radius of curvature taken from the 3 mm zone centered on the thinnest point. A states for anterior surface, B for back surface, C for corneal thickness at the thinnest point, and D for distance visual acuity. The advantage of this classification over the older Amsler chromite classification is that is uh, it recognizes the importance of the posterior corneal surface and each component uh, is individually graded. Diagnosis of keratoconus uh, includes uh, history, visual acuity, corrected and uncorrected, Munson sign, which is a protrusion of the lower eyelid when looking downward, slit lamp signs, flashering, risotti sign, vodstria, scarring following heat drops. So here I would like to share a few clinical pictures. So here we can see a Munson sign, a protrusion of the lower eyelid when the patient looks down, Rizutti's sign, sharply focused uh, conical beam of light near the nasal limbus. Then here we can see a flashering brownish iron deposits, uh, which are really good uh, observed in green filter. Vodstria are vertical stri uh, stress lines at level of posterior stroma, and they may disappear on gentle pressure on the globe, as you can see here on image B. And the thinning in mild keratoconus uh, can be seen here and thinning in severe keratoconus. The next slide, we, uh, in the next slide, we can see apical corne corneal scarring and uh, acute heat drops. Uh, on the image below, we can see prom prominent corneal nerves and also Bowman's rupture. Instrumentation for diagnosis, those are curvature-based devices, topographers, elevation-based devices, uh, tomographers, hybrid devices, topo tomographers, and anterior segment optical coherence tomography. Therapeutic tools in keratoconus. The most common uh, therapeutic tool in keratoconus uh, are contact lenses. Let's start with corneal rigid gas permeable contact lenses. Ideal keratoconus corneal RGP fit requires the following. The first one is the good centration to provide optimal vision and move approximately 0.5 or, or till 1 mm with blink for better oxygen rich tear exchange beneath the lens. And the ideal fluorescein pattern should have three point touch. First touch is the light touch at the apex uh, with surrounding pooling, and the second and third touch is the mid uh, peripheral with pooling of the 0.5 and one millimeter edge of the lens. And the result of fluorescein pattern is a bull's eye pattern of concentric rings. What we have to know, the mid peripheral touch helps to distribute the weight of the lens across a larger area, rather than placing the full burden on the apex uh, of the cone. Piggyback lens. To improve patient uh, comfort and increase lens wear time, some practitioners may place a soft contact lens beneath their RGP called a piggybacking backing. And there are also scleral lenses. The advantages of these lenses is that uh, this lens can be used even in severe cases of ectasia. It works well in patients with ocular surface disease. The, it has a perfect centration. The lens sits um, does not touch the cornea, the large diameter has minimal detectable movement and minimal lead interaction uh, since the edge of the lens sits beyond the palpebral aperture. What should be uh, noted that contact lenses have no therapeutic effect on corneal ectasia. Patients should be advised that wearing contact lenses does not prevent the progression of keratoconus, but it should be worn when vision with spectacles is poor compared to vision with contact lenses. Lens modality may need to change as the patient's ectasia progresses. Re-evaluation should occur every 6 to 12 months in unstable keratoconus, every 12 months in stable keratoconus, and if all lens modalities fail, surgical intervention may be required. Next tool for keratoconus treatment is intracorneal ring segment 
um, there are a few types uh, of this uh, segments. Uh, there's those are from PMA a material, polymethyl metacrylate, and a newly introduced corneal allergenic intrastromal rig segments. Before talking about uh, cross-linking, I would like to say that some doctors prefer intrastromal uh, corneal rings, some doctors prefer only cross-linking. I personally uh, prefer cross-linking more than intrastromal rings and um, this is just the, the decision which the surgeon takes himself. About cross-linking, I would like also to add that I will make a, a total presentation about that um, and the video, so make sure that you stay tuned for more detailed explanation about cross-linking. But here I give just a general information. Uh, the definition is that the cross-linking is the treatment modality for keratoconus where we combine riboflavin with a UV8, UV8, uh, a light and it was first postulated at the University of Dresden by Spoil and Seiler. The photochemical cross-linking of collagen within the corneal stroma could be achieved by utilizing the interaction between riboflavin and UVA to create free radicals, uh, oxygen singlets, and without uh, oxygen singlets, cross-linking does not occur. There are following types of corneal cross-linking, epi-off, epi-on, accelerated with high-fluence cross-linking, cross-linking on thin corneas less than 400 micron, cross-linking combination with other treatment uh, modalities uh, such as LASIK, PRK, ICR implantation and SMILE surgery. What is new in cross-linking is that flash-linking process with UVA and polyvinyl purely done may have the potential to photochemically cross-link the cornea in only 30 seconds and rose bengal 0.1% administration following green light application in a less than 5 minutes total treatment time was also uh, investigated. Surgery for keratoconus Corneal graft is a traditional recourse for advanced keratoconus. What is advanced keratoconus? Spectacle correction is insufficient, continued contact lens wear is intolerable, visual acuity has fallen to unacceptable levels. Which surgeries uh, of corneal graft uh, exist? Those are penetrating keratoplasty, deep lapner keratoplasty with the big bubble method and males manual method. Here in the slide is presented initial keratoconus management. So the first question would be if the patient has a good contact lens tolerance with good visual acuity. If the answer is yes, then in case of progressive disease, we would perform cross-linking procedure. If there is no keratoconus progression, then we just observe. If the patient doesn't have a good contact lens tolerance and good visual acuity, and if there is no progressive disease, then uh, if the patient would have a keratoconus grade 1 and 2, the treatment procedure would be whether uh, gl glasses or uh, trans-PR care combined with a cross-linking. And in case if the patient has a grade 3 or more, then uh, intracorneal ring segment uh, would be recommended. If there is a progressive uh, keratoconus disease, then in case of a grade 3 or 4, uh, we would perform cross-linking with intracorneal ring segments combined, and in case of grade 1 and 2, with a good visual acuity more than 0 0.6, then a cross-linking with or without trans-PRK can be recommended. In case if the patient uh, progresses to grade 4 keratoconus disease and more severe uh, cases with heat drops and the visual acuity less than 0 0.6, then corneal transplant would be uh, performed. Then, corneal transplantation for keratoconus. Here we would consider as a first uh, strategy question if the patient have an intact distement membrane uh, endothelium complex. If yes, then um, DALC would be performed. If no, then the following uh, might be uh, taken into consideration. If the patient would have tear, then uh, penetrated keratoplastic surgery should be performed. If the patient has severe deep scarring, 
the again penetrated keratoplasty and if the patient has isolated deep scar and uh, visual access is free then DALC might be performed and in case if visual access is affected then uh, whether penetrated keratoplasty or DALC uh, can be recommended. Refractive surgery in keratoconus. Just as a start, I would like to say that not many surgeons uh, prefer doing refractive surgery on keratoconus patients. It's just a personal preference and I uh, personally uh, would totally agree. But um, everybody has his approach and his choices. And in case if you perform refractive surgery, then uh, very... Um, careful screening should be performed. So here are the uh, I, there are presented exclusion criteria for refractive surgery in keratoconus. So uh, exclusion cr criteria would be increasing astigmatism of uh, one point, zero diopter, significant changes in the orientation of refractive access, increase of one um, diopter or more on the optical power of steepest corneal meridian, decrease of uh, 25 micron or more in corneal thickness. Here uh, is uh, the table presented for exclusion criteria uh, regarding fake uh, intraocular lens implantation for keratoconus patients. In these slides are presented uh, exclusion cr criteria for keratoconic patients who could be a candidate for PRK surgery. So exclusion criteria are advanced or progressive keratoconus keratoconus metometry more than 56 diopters, pachymetry less than 440 micron, large displacement of the apex and presence of scars or rupture of the bone membrane. There are also combined treatment for uh, keratoconus when we can combine PRK surgery or fake gyral implantation or ICR surgeries uh, with a cross-linking and there are also inclusion and exclusion criteria which should be con uh, considered. Inclusion criteria are clinical manifestation of progressive keratoconus, age under 35 years, visual acuity less than 0.8, pachymetry over 400 micron, keratometry readings less than 58 and exclusion criteria pregnancy and breastfeeding, visual acuity more or equal to 0.8, corneal central opacity, and serious dry eye syndrome. Additional surgeries for keratoconus are wavefront-guided PRK after cross-linking, iris-supported fake chiales, toric implantable columnar lens for myopic correction and astigmatism, and cataract surgery with a toric, uh, with a possibility for, uh, of a toric uh, lens implantation. And the last thing what I would to add that there are sometimes also recurrence of the host disease and it might be the host road, donor road or mechanical trauma. In the first case, uh, recurrence of the host disease in the graft such that the cells from the remaining host cornea induce the grafted tissue to develop keratoconic pathology. The donor road uh, is a transmission of undiagnosed keratoconus from the donor cornea, uh, cornea might be a reason and from the mechanical trauma such as contact lens wearing or eye rubbing can cause damage to the sutured cornea and failure of the wound healing process leading to apoptosis and the weakened graft cornea. This was Keratoconus start with a solid foundation uh, online lecture. Thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, idrtutsi. Till the next video, bye.